I'm Hemingway, it's free! I'm Hemingway, it's free! In the movie you play, Dickie, who is Dom's best mate, mm -hmm. through thick and thin, mainly thin, what's the nicest thing or the biggest favour you've been able to do for a friend? The biggest favour I've been able to do for a friend is to write and direct them in a part um, given to them. And that was Julie Waters in a film that I wrote and directed called Wawa ten years ago. My head's throbbing. Fucking throbbing, Dicky. Like a disco in my head, like a fucking manila disco full of transvestites and suckling pigs. I've got seizure in my brain. Diabolical seizure. Fucking and sucking coke. I did too much. I think that it's just, you know, in the same way that Dom Hemingway deals with a dysfunctional but sort of functioning friendship that it's people who are either from opposite sides of the track, um, who when they meet in the middle, you get this frisson, um, sand, pearl, oyster, you know, that combination. And I think that's exactly what happens with uh, Dom Hemingway, that, that Dickie, the character I play, comes from posh families, so is the black sheep of that, which you never find anything out um, ab about. And Dom Hemingway comes from, you know, Southeast London, and somehow they end up in the way of friendship, um, muddling along. And Dicky puts up with all sorts of verbal abuse, but you know that underneath it all, it's like there's people you see in the pubs that you think, "Fucking hell, they're trying to bash each other's heads in," but somehow they're they're there every night, still drinking together and still laughing, because there's something, some shared experience that you know motors them through their lives, and that's exactly what happened in this story which is why it was so enjoyable to do, because Jude is a very generous and charismatic person to be around, so you know, we had a very good time doing it. Tom, don't think of what you're thinking. That's Mr. Fontaine's property. Property is a relative term for a thief. Still, I'm just looking, admiring. She's rather fit. Not her, not Paulina. Fit to fiddle, I'd say. Dom, you don't admire that. Bugger off, Diggy. I'll admire what I want to admire. Think what I want to think. I have to ask this question. I'm yeah. sure you get asked every time. Do you still get drunk students still shouting with nail quotes at you? Yeah, not even <laughs> students. I've, I, you know, <laughs> on a daily basis, somebody will say scrubbers or get in the back of the van or uh, you terrible or whatever. <laughs> um, we've gone on holiday by mistake I've had. Um, we want the finest ones available. You know, I'd, these lines keep coming back. Um, and I, if, if, they if I don't hear them, I get tweeted them. I can imagine. So it's, so it's ongoing. And what was interesting is that my 24-year-old daughter and a bunch of her friends came to a screening of Dom Hemingway um, two weeks ago, and they have been quoting lines from this movie. So it seems to me that the seeds of a cult future for Dom Hemingway have already been laid out there. <laughs> Mr. Fontaine! Do you hunt, Dom? I need to use a gun to hold up a place, or threaten someone, or rob them, or pistol whip them, or scare them. But no, no hunting. <laughs> What's the strangest thing that anyone's ever tweeted at you? The strangest thing was uh, my daughter's power steering broke down on the motorway and she's in a second-hand mini. And I was filming in America, and I got so incensed about this because she was being charged so much and told how long it was going to take to fix when she discovered there's a manufacturing fault with that batch. And so I tweeted about it, and within a day, Mini had paid for all the repairs, admitted that they, it was a manufacturing fault, and gave her a bunch of flowers. And Watchdog has now done two programs about it. So that was the biggest surprise of the power of Twitter. You're starring in the new series of Girls. Uh, what can you tell us about your character? I'd like to tell you a lot, but I would have my knees capped if um, I told you anything at all, other than that I play somebody of my own age who is older than all of the fathers of all the actors in the series. But I'm in it for three episodes and start, goes out next year. You've worked with both Madonna and the Spice Girls. Whose music do you prefer? Well, I have managed, believe it or not, to stay friends with all of them. So um, 
rather than have a Jean-Paul Gaultier bra stuck at my backside or one of those platform <laughs> boots taken out of the uh, museum of fashion, I'm going to stay neutral on the whole lot. I like them all. You lost your bloody head. Why do you think I'm wearing this black glove all the time? I thought it was a fashion statement or something. Fashion statement. Get them up there.